So there's currently 29 different relics in Bed Wars, and this video, we're gonna be ranking every single one of them from worst to best. Now, before you like think Dragon's Egg is the number one, unfortunately, they did disable it. They actually disabled the Dragon's Egg. That was actually really, really powerful because recently they made a change to Bed Wars. So each team will now be assigned the same set of vote relics at the beginning of the game. This change is experimental and subject to change. Because of that, they temporarily disabled the Dragon Egg relic because it currently does not work when more than one team has it. They should make it so everyone can have dragon egg mode but yeah so dragon egg is currently gone also reinforced bed was removed like two or three updates ago so those two relics are not included in this tier list however should dragon's egg ever come back i would say it's top five definitely worth getting if you can get it anyway before i jump into this be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel now starting with number 29 is the stomper relic surprisingly this is a legendary relic and it is the worst relic currently in the game in my opinion i tested out it's more annoying than it's actually effective. Like it's really annoying because you get like a little bit of that jade kind of effect and you drop down and nearby enemies take 125% of your fall damage, right? But it doesn't do that much damage. It really doesn't. It's kind of an embarrassing relic of all of the relics and more annoying than anything. So I, I can't really say much more about this one. I'm sure some people have, you know, like found these like game breaking combos because of the game's balance between kits and items and such. But really, just in like of itself, not a good relic. Next one, number 28 is Glass Cannon. And you would think, you know, considering I love Glass Cannon kind of builds with most of the stuff that I do, like Airy, for example, this one's not that great, okay? This one, it, it's considered a corrupt relic. And, you know, you get this like increased team damage, but as a result, you get reduced armor effectiveness. So you're pretty much getting sliced through. Even if you have diamond armor, you're going to get shredded. And in this game, with so many different like damage relics, you don't really want to be using this relic, in my opinion. And there, there's way better relics out there. Next up, one number 27 is Nature's Touch. And this one's all about the healing. So you get increased healing received. I don't know if they've changed the stats on this, but last I saw it was like 33%. They keep changing the values. But just in general, all, all it's all about just like, in, you know, amplifying that healing received. Now, this is cool if you're really all about like the healer combos. Like, you know, maybe you have Melody or you're using Trinity or something. Then, you know, maybe it kind of works. But I mean, healing received increased by 33%. I, don't, I can't think of many other relics that would not be better than this. And so for that, this one's kind of settling in at number 27. And next, we have another nature one. With number 26, we have nature's essence. This one's kind of funky, okay? So like, you can essentially buy these like essences from the shopkeeper to increase your max health up to like another 100. So you can get like, a, a, you know, up to 200 HP, which sounds really cool, right? But it gets really, really, really expensive the higher you go. And so, I, I don't really know that I would ever buy this. Like there's better things to spend your currency and resources on. I don't really think this is a good relic. I mean, if they were to buff it, it'd probably start becoming kind of a broken relic. So I don't know that this relic should even exist in my opinion. It's kind of a fun one. You get these like little orbs and you can basically, you know, buy and then increase your max HP. But I just don't really like this one. I pretty much never get it. I've gotten it like two or three times and I'm just like, nah, not gonna use this one. Cause there's always something better. Next is number 25 with King's Grasp. Um, this one's pretty cool. So basically how this works is you get a chance to keep 60% of your resources on death. This is kind of like Clingy, the, the Clingy enchantment. And this is cool if you have like a lot of valuable things. So maybe you're like farming a lot and you expect to farm that match a ton. Then, you know, being able to like keep 60% of your resources is pretty huge, especially if you're like metal detector or something. I don't know about you. I don't like planning to die and I don't really want to like plan around losing. So I don't, I don't know. This one's a weird one. I'd much rather have like amplified damage or maybe additional like resource gain. I don't know, 60%. I'd rather have like loot, like looter or like prospector's discipline or resource refund or something else than this one. Next one, number 24 is honestly a relic that I've not really used that much. And it's typically because most of my matches don't go that long to the point where you're going to go and get enchantments unless you're really trying to delay intentionally. This one's pretty good if you think about it. Like if you can get electrified, static type damage increases by 70%. Like it already does a lot of damage and it does a lot of damage to everyone else. It, this is actually pretty OP if you think about it. But like I said, out of all the other ones on this list, I don't really use this one. I usually have some other better option than Electrified because Electrified, you can't use out the gate. 
right? So it's kind of late game. It's a late game relic, um, similar to, I would say like Runic Divide. Um, Runic Divide is, you know, the ability to get two enchantments, but like Runic Divide is still better than this one because you're, you're gonna get two enchantments. Why would I care about 70% more damage on static if I can have a second enchantment active? Like that's way crazier because you can get like fire and static. That's gonna do way more damage than Electrified is gonna do. Next up with number 23 is a Corrupt Relic. And typically the Corrupt Relics are gonna be ones that kind of have like a little bit of an advantage, but then there's like a big disadvantage at some point, right? For Black Hole, how this works is um, a Black Hole is gonna spawn in 10 minutes, right? And essentially what this does is it gives you in, in exchange for basically completely killing your team and giving your uh, team only 10 minutes to live, you're gonna get a damage bonus. This is kind of broken if you think about it, especially if you're gonna play like squads or solos. And if you can keep like the match under like solos is like seven seven 7.5 minutes. So basically, you you gotta keep the match under seven and a half minutes or else you're gonna die no matter what. So this is not so good for like camping situations, but you also do have like kills, right? So killing people will actually add time to the countdown. So it's not like a flat number. You can like kill farm and you know, keep, keep, your, keep your game alive basically by killing, which is pretty cool. But this one's kind of rare because it is corrupt. I don't really like it compared to some of the other ones that I typically get. Because if you have a late game, you're kind of toast. If everyone's camping, you're pretty much GG. So this is kind of like, that's why it's, you know, kind of considered a corrupt relic is it has a huge disadvantage to it for, for that short term benefit. Next with number 22 is Glitched Enchanting. This one's actually really cool. The whole enchantment is replaced with the powerful Glitched variant. So this is how you get Glitched Enchantments. And they're just way more powerful, like variants, like, you know, things extend longer, more damage, for example. And um, I made a completely separate video on this, but it's pretty cool. Like all the different Glitched Enchantments are pretty awesome. The thing is, is you still need that enchant table. And most of the time, I don't really care about enchantments, okay? Enchantments are kind of like, oh, game is lasting long great you know in my world at least like we typically don't plan around getting enchantments enchantments are kind of the result of campers and kind of like resource kind of oofs like if we kind of mess up and we're not rushing correctly and we're not you know managing our resources well maybe there's a bunch of drones out stealing resources the games can kind of get longer and as a result you really want to have that enchant table but you don't plan around that so that's why this one's um, lower rank than i would put if pretty much enchant tables were always in every single match that i played i would absolutely put this one way higher it'd probably be like a, easily like a top five for me Next with number 21 is Melody's Lullaby. This one's pretty cool. Um, it basically puts like this little like record or music player on top of your bed and soothing music, you know, kind of plays from it. It, it sounds more like elevator music. I don't know about smooth. <laughs> I don't know about soothing. It's very, uh, I guess it is. I mean, it definitely put me to sleep. Um, every second you get healed for five. Um, as long as you're near the team bed and it's like up to 20 blocks away. This is crazy, crazy range. Basically, you could be at like your generator sitting there and getting healed while you're taking damage as long as you're, in, you know, next to the bed. It's not not op but it's pretty good but what i don't like about it is it's just kind of it's it's kind of gen camping simulator right and i'm not into gen camping simulator so i don't really like this one because i'm not usually near my bed i'd much rather have any of the other um, relics we're about to go through than this one next one number 20 is iron will this one again is similar to um say like king's grasp and that you're kind of planning on failure. You're kind of planning on dying and you're kind of planning on losing your bed. Now, in the most cases for like YouTubers, this is a really good one to get. I probably should have ranked this one higher because we do get, you know, bed breaks a lot. Like we get targeted so hard that it's it's usually going to happen, especially like solos or doubles. Someone's probably going to take your bed. I don't really like that because, you know, I'd much rather have like immediate damage, immediate benefit, immediate loot. And that's kind of a pattern. You're going to keep hearing that from me this entire video. Um, there's a theme there, right? But basically how Iron Works, uh, Iron Will works is you you got uh, incoming damage is reduced by 25% when your bed is broken. So that's pretty nice. You're definitely going to, you know, be much more tanky. And especially if you have like good armor and maybe have like armor prot, that's pretty, that's pretty epic. So it's really good if you kind of get targeted a lot. But like I said, I don't really plan around failure. Like I don't like planning for failure. That's why I really don't like Croco Wolf is, you know, you plan around your bed break in order to be able to use his abilities. Not great. Next with number 19 is Blood Deal. This is a corrupt again. This is the final corrupt one we're going to go through. And, you know, you basically deal 20 damage and then 10% of the damage is dealt back to you. Now, the way it reads, it almost sounds like you're getting half of the damage you dealt back to you. And it's actually not the case. It's only 10%. So say you typically would do like 10 damage, you know, 20%, obviously you're going to be doing like 12 damage instead, right? So 20% of 10 is two, pretty easy math. Now, 10% of that 12 is going to be dealt back with you. So essentially you're going to get 1.2 
damage set back to you. So you're basically hurting yourself while you're hurting someone else, but it's only 10% of whatever you're doing. Now, this could be pretty detrimental if you're doing, you know, say like 50 damage to someone and you're taking five each time and that could end you, especially if they have like the spike backpack. So I don't really like this one because of the fact that you do take damage when you're hitting someone else. But hey, you know what? 20% damage is not too bad. But again, there's better relics than this one. I'd much rather have like Knight's Code that gives, you know, 22% damage or say like Second Wind or like Piercing Blade, which says 25% uh, of all damage dealt ignores, you know, armor. There's like way better uh, relics than this one. So this is why it's only number 19. All right, next up we have number 18. This one's pretty cool. This is Quick Forge. Now, this one, you start a game with a random team upgrade and it, you can never get, you, you're never gonna start with a tier one generator upgrade. Um, they did nerf that before you used to be able to get in. It was really fun. But basically now every um, 11 minutes, you get another free upgrade. This is pretty cool because you're basically getting free um, gen upgrades, which is kind of important in the game. Like you might, be, you know, might be able to get like that diamond generator. You might get like damage, you might get armor. Now you only get one at the start and then after 11 minutes, you get another one so you're technically only getting two free upgrades unless you really are dragging that match on past the bed breaks and you get a third one um and then geez if you're really going that far you need some help and maybe something other than this forge but like two free upgrades not too bad with this one but that's because it's only two i put this way lower than it should be um if it were like getting buffed like i, I think at launch or at you know when relics were first released i think it was like way better i think it was like every like nine minutes or seven minutes i can't remember but we were getting a lot of upgrades Next up with number 17 is Wormhole. This one's actually pretty good, especially if you're like solo or do, you know, in doubles. Um, basically, Wormhole gives you the ability to like recall back to your base and it has a 180 second cooldown. This is really helpful if like maybe you're like resource gathering in mid for a while and you know someone's going to try to like, you know, kill you or intercept you on your way back. Um, you could basically just kind of build upwards, hit that, uh, you know, Wormhole kind of recall to your home and then you safely get teleported back to your base. Really, really nice. Um, but you can only use it like, you know, every three minutes. You kind of need to stay alive for a while if you're you know getting chased it's not really like super advantageous to use this relic but it's kind of like a you know a hell mary type thing where it's like i really need to get home quick i'm kind of surrounded or i'm without blocks or whatever pretty nice but kind of bad at the same time coming up on number 16 with runic divide this one's really cool because man it gives you two enchants it literally can you can use two enchantments okay but it costs double now here's the catch on this one you know how you need like 80 iron to be able to get like one enchant well you need to spend 160 and then it rolls two for you but the problem with this is that and this is why it's not super high and this is why i don't usually get it is what if you get two enchantments you don't really like this gets a little tricky because you're basically paying double especially on the emeralds that's eight emeralds each time you want to you know, spin and buy enchants. So there's some definite downside, but some definite benefits. But like I said earlier on, I don't plan on having long games where you have to have enchantments. Don't really like this one, but I do. It's really OP, but do you really want to plan a match for enchantments? And if you're the type of player that likes to camp at your base, this is perfect for you. Now, next with number 15, I felt horrible putting it here because I actually do use this one a lot. I would say like in most cases, I use this, I'd say majority of the time, if it's presented to me inside like a, a solos match because I want that sword right away. It's kind of dependent on the, the kit too. Um, basically, you start with a stone sword, which is crazy, crazy good. Like maybe your elder tree, for example. That's really, really crazy. This one is like the elder tree's friend because all swords are 30% cheaper too. Now, if your elder tree, cheap swords, you can't buy armor. So you're going to spend all your currency in swords. And if it's cheaper, then you can get other resources very quickly. You can get crossbows and such. So Swordmaster is really cool. It's great for rushing, especially in like doubles and, and solos. Um, Swordmaster, not so great in like squads or majority of the other kind of matches. So like starting a game with a stone sword, I mean, once you die, you kind of lose that anyway. Um, yeah, you can buy it again for 30% cheaper, but it's still kind of bad. Like I'd much rather have some of these other relics before this one but still it's a really really good relic especially depending on the mode now i have no idea what the, you know why this one and the next one are ranked higher than sword master but i kind of just kind of bunched them together um so next up with number 14 is gonna be unity now I have picked this one a lot, especially in doubles. And basically how Unity works is you stay close to your teammates and any incoming damage is reduced by 15%. This is kind of changes depending on the mode though. Like if you're in doubles, it's like 12%. So like solos is 15%, doubles is gonna be 12%, and then squads is gonna be 8%. Now they do keep playing with the numbers. This is the current numbers as of, as of this video. That's pretty nice if you're like, running doubles because if you're you know running next to your teammate maybe you're doing a rush and damage is decreased by uh 15 that's kind of nice it's kind of nice even better if you have like maybe a healer like melody or something 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm not sure why this one's still better than Swordmaster, because I kind of would probably pick Swordmaster over this one, but this one is pretty OP, which is Call of the Void. Now, how this works is if you kill someone, if you got the damage, the, the last tap on someone and they fall into the void and die, um, it grants you a pearl, basically a free telepearl. And I haven't tested this, but I believe if you pearl, period, you get a health shield no matter what. So like, even if you get, like if you go and buy pearls, I believe it still gives you that 10 health um, shield no matter what, which is pretty powerful in it, in and of itself, especially like if, if they're Kalia or like Yuzi or something that, you know, creates a lot of knockback and you go in the void, as soon as you die in the void, they're telepearling to your base and taking your bed, which is really, really annoying because they're also shielded by that 10 health. So this one's pretty powerful, especially in those scenarios, but you do have to actually kill someone to the void. With number 12, we have Escape Artist. This one's a really fun one because, the, you know, you start the game with three balloons and then you can hold an extra three balloons, basically giving you like a total of nine balloons. So if you're a balloon, like huge balloon fan, this one's for you. Now, the cool thing about this one is that like from a rushing standpoint, you don't have to wait. You can pretty much just start, you, you start the game with these balloons. You can pretty much start ballooning over to enemy base like beds right away. <laughs> Next one, number 11 is Prospector's Discipline. This one's pretty cool because what it does is it gives you a chance or a 20% chance of getting one additional diamond or emerald when you pick them up. So kind of OP if you think about it, it's 20, you know, it's 20% chance. And that's really, really crazy. That's why it's kind of ranked, you know, where it's at. However, there's better, like there's better looting relics, okay? There's like looter, there's cashback, and even like supercharged drill is better. There's just better resource based relics in this that I wouldn't really consider this one like a really top 10 relic, but it's really just on the outside because you do get that chance for extra stuff, especially if you're a farmer, maybe you're like a drone or something. That's pretty killer. And finally, we're starting to enter our top 10, beginning with Looter. Now, Looter is pretty cool because damaging and killing enemies, actually, they just change this. It's only damaging. So damaging enemies has a chance to drop resources. This is basically plunder and relic form. Um, basically, it's a free enchantment. You know, if you're damaging people from a distance, basically plunder, and you're getting a ton of resources. I, I've gotten a lot of resources from this. You know, you're just kind of engaging with people. They take off. You still have resources from them battling you. So like anytime like someone comes by and then runs off, you know, maybe they're like runners, you're still going to resources from them also you know consider if you're like using projectiles on them you're burning them things like that pretty killer next up with number nine is resource refund and this one kind of crazy man like i don't know how many times i've like used this one and i was always really impressed by this because suddenly you know i'd go buy something for like emeralds and suddenly I have emeralds back it's just nutty like it's basically free stuff and this one's probably the most powerful in my opinion like resource gathering type relic other than supercharged generator because that is insane like you you know you get a 20 percent speed boost we'll talk about in a minute you know anytime i I like go and buy stuff like i'm getting fireballs i'm getting supplies maybe i had 200 iron suddenly i'm like filled back up with a bunch of iron to go and spend something like i could buy like another fireball or something so this one's been really really helpful in matches i really like this one definitely deserving of its spot of number nine Next up with number eight is Knight's Code. This one's pretty cool because you get plus 22% damage on whatever you're dealing. And then the only catch is you cannot use the enchant table. I don't know about you, that sounds like a fair shake. Let's do it. But yeah, I, I don't really care about using the enchant table. If I'm gonna get that plus 22 damage on top of whatever I'm making, I'm taking it. Next up with number seven is probably my favorite resource related relic. And that is supercharged generator. This one basically speeds up the generator by 20%. That's like over time, this is huge, especially if like you're doing diamonds, you got tier three, anything like that. This thing is just gonna feed you like crazy. Um, early game, it's super, super helpful too because you're able to out gear players very quickly. You don't really have to, you know, like leave your generator to go and like dip into other people's generators to get stuff. Like this one's super, super helpful. Um, I've used this a ton in like solos, doubles, squads, Next up with number six is Ember's Anguish. And basically how this one works is you, you know, 20% chance to apply fire damage to your enemy for three seconds. Um, what I like about this one, especially against like balloons, like you can like light someone up, you know, with balloons with fire. So I don't know. I love this one also because, you know, you have that extra damage early, early games. Like you're going to start lighting people on fire. You're going to do a lot of damage with this. Super, super cool. Also obviously stacks with enchantments. So I, I like this one. This one's definitely deserving of its placement. Next up with number five is Second Strike. This one's crazy. You get double damage every eight hits. It's pretty much guaranteed. Every eight hits, you're gonna do double damage. That's insane. So if you're already like applying like 20 damage to someone, you're gonna get 40 damage on the eighth hit. Absolutely crazy, especially if you have like, you know, effects on them. Maybe you have critical strike. Dude, this one is insane. Um, is it better than the other ones that are about to come up? It depends on the situation. Let me tell you, it depends on the situation. I kind of rank this based on my own preference, but you could probably put Second 
second strike. Anywhere in the top five, in my opinion. Next up, win number four is second win. This one's really, really, really helpful. I'm telling you, every single time I've gone up against someone that has second wind, I'm just cringing inside because I'm so annoyed by it because it basically saves their butt. How this works is once per life, you can heal 30% of your max health when your health drops below 25%. Imagine they get basically a freebie. It's 30% of your max health. They just went from like maybe 20% HP to 50% HP because it does, like I said, it heals 30% of their max health when they dip below 25%. So now this does vary depending on like team. So like it's 18% and then it goes like 24% and teams of two and four. And so there's like very like variance of how much it heals you um, depending on your team size. But even so, like this is a crazy, crazy powerful one. Super annoying to go up against. That's why I put it as a top four because even when I've used it, it saved my butt many, many times where I'm like, how did I not just die? And then I just, I realized, oh yeah, second wind. Next up, number three is Piercing Blade. And this one has to be like one of my favorites, if not my favorite damage dealing relic period in the game. Um, this one, basically 25% of all damage dealt ignores armor, like 25%. So give you an idea, if you're hitting someone with um, 20 damage, five of that damage is gonna ignore armor. It's gonna go straight through that armor. The armor is not going to mitigate that. It's not going to reduce the damage you dealt, um, at least 25% of it. Huge, huge, huge. Especially when you're, you know, using like a damage dealing kit, this thing's going to destroy. Next with number two, of course, bow spammers win with marksmen. So marksmen, basically you spawn in with a bow. How awesome is that? It's basically free bow. That's 40 iron that you don't have to spend on the bow. If you're a bow spammer, it's 40 iron. You don't have to, you don't have to save up for that. All you got to do is save up 16 and you got, you got arrows. Like that's all you need to do. 16 and you got arrows. The other crazy thing about it is projectiles deal up to 250% damage based on the distance from target. The max damage is at 100 blocks. Okay. So your max damage that <laughs> I don't even know what to say about this one. The marksman is like overpowered. Amazing. One of the best relics in the game, except for the head start. Head start can really, really break this. We're going to get into that. Obviously head start number one. And that is because head start, all teammates start with 32 iron. So you could choose to do what you want with this iron. You could choose to buy wool and rush other, you know, enemy teams. You could choose to jug someone. Imagine jugging someone, everyone, you know, all four team members on a squad, 32 iron to their juggernaut. Juggernaut's stacked. Um, you know, especially if you're doing proper splits, maybe you're doing a T1 strat with that. You're going to have the fastest juggernaut in the game. You can buy bed breaking tools and rush the enemy team. And like solos, this is killer. And duels, this is killer. Like this is just a really, 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 really crazy, crazy good relic for multiple purposes where you can kind of throw is if you like invest in like a sword and die then this is kind of dumb but think about the value of this thing you've got early early stack you're you're gonna outgear your neighbor so quick you could take their gen suddenly you free up that gen for you to be able to dip into and, and you know as much as you want head start is really really a practical and useful relic that is pretty much helpful in every single situation and game mode and that is why I put it as number one, the best relic in the game. Now, if you were, you know, to tell me, DV, you have a choice between Head Start, Marksman, and Piercing Blade, I may not choose Head Start. It depends. It really depends on my kit. I think you could choose many of the top 10 relics um, in between and interchangeably in this list. So if you're like, oh man, DB, I don't agree. I think Head Start, I would choose, I would always choose double hit, you know, like the second strike over that. And like I said, this is a top 10 kind of list. It's situational. Relics are always going to be situational against your kits, your team's um, abilities, the game mode. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Anyway, Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Peace.